Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg from Logic Pro Expert. And in this video, I'm gonna look at one of the best kept secrets in Logic Pro, which is Delay Designer. Now it's not the sexiest of interfaces and can seem a bit daunting, but it's actually not that difficult once you roll up your sleeves a little bit. And I'm gonna put it to work in this video and it's a multi-tap delay and I'm gonna create well, some custom multi-taps. Now I'm gonna work on a chorus group vocal section here and I'm gonna play for you as is. There's a lot of space there to fill. I give it up for you. Same thing, it repeats three times with all that space. I give it up for you. All right, so I want to use delays to fill that up. Now, the normal thing to do would be to automate and use for you. I gave it up for you, for you, for you, for you, for you. But I want to use gave it up. I want that to be in the holes, not for you. So I'm going to start by automating well, first I'm gonna set up a send, a new send to a new bus, an unused bus, and we'll just name this. And what I'm gonna do is choose that as my automation parameter over here under main, to my new vocal throw delay. And I'm just gonna zoom a little bit using command with the arrow keys. And I wanna automate just this first phrase. I give it up. I'm gonna zoom a little more. I don't even want the I, I just want gave it up. So I'm gonna hold down my command key for the marquee, and grab in there and then pull this up. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Just grab in there and then pull this up. So I'm creating my ramp in and out. And the third time, same thing, just like that. All right, so now let me call up Delay Designer on here. And I just have obviously the default instance. And let's just hear what it's doing right now. I give it up for you, give it up. I give it up for you. So it's creating that one delay and I'm gonna zoom a little bit so we can see it. And we're in sync mode and we're locked to a 16th note grid and that's fine. If I click on it, I can see that it's at one third beat first division. Let's option drag that and create some other ones. Let's place this one maybe at one four one and then let's create another one at one four three like that and I'm just option dragging. And I can use this to scroll the display and move it. And let's create another one. I'm snapping to the grid, of course. Two, one, three. And then let's do one more at two, two, four. Let's just hear that rhythm and see if we like it. I give it up for you. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. I give it up for you. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. Give it up. I give all right, that's sounding nice. Now I can start modifying them with cutoff and panning and so on. But before I do that, I wanna create some little rolls into them. And this is where Delay Designer gets really interesting. So I've created an interesting multi-tap rhythm here. I'm gonna turn off sync mode and I wanna create a couple of hits leading up to this. I'm just option dragging this twice in this case to create some other ones. And here we're viewing levels. So let me just select these and bring the level down on those. And let's create some before here. Again, option dragging. And these aren't specific rhythmic values. I just want to get them really close. That's good. And I'll just bring these three down in level. And let's just hear what this little rolling rhythm sounds like. I give it up for you. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. Give it up. So you hear that way it sort of rolls, that glitchy stutter kind of effect. Kind of interesting. Maybe I'll pull this out a little bit. I give it up for you. All right, so that's working nicely. Now we can have some fun and edit these individual taps. So if I go to cutoff here, we can get some filtering. And here you can see the kind of inspector at the bottom here, update, and I'm doing some high pass filtering here and we can roll off the top end and then position it where we want like that. In this case, that good, that Gion gives a bit bright. So I wanna roll off some of the high end, do the same thing there. You know what, I wanna zoom a little bit and we can do that by scrolling vertically here. So I can grab these a bit more easily, these little roll-in notes. I want those nice and high, kind of like that. And same thing with these ones. Let's hear what that sounds like with the filtering. I give it up for you, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. All right, so maybe it's a little bit too much. And I used auto zoom, you see, so they all fit into the display there. And that's fine, but let's bring back some more of the body of these. I give it up for you. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. So I want them subtle, those little roll-ins. Now we have resonance. We can 
create a resonant peak. And again, we can select individual taps here in the inspector and then adjust them individually. We have two potential slopes. Let's switch to 12 dB. Let's see what that sounds like. I give it up for you. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. I'm going to bring these ones up more and switch those to 12. I give it up for you. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. All right. We can transpose them. I don't think I want to necessarily do that. However, maybe I'll select one tap at a time and do a little bit of just offsetting of the fine tuning so they're a little bit detuned and each one can have a unique offset. I can turn pitch on and off and I can transpose in semitones, but here I'm just transposing in cents. That's fine, let's leave those. I just wanna have a bit of tuning offset. I give it up for you, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. All right, and panning, we can pan these all individually so we can affect the stereo spread. And again, as I drag in each tap here, you can see the spread and then the center pan position when we grab in the middle. So I'm going to not hard pan these, but leave a bit of spread and dial them down. We can swap if we go past the center point, but grab the center point to move them. And now I'm going to zoom by dragging vertically so I can get access to these little roll ones individually. And I want to pan those in one direction with the principal one in another direction. Let's select D from here. And then we have these ones as well. Let's do that opposite and then E. And let's hear what that sounds like. I give it up for you. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. So it's nice with those rolls. I just want to bring their levels up a little bit so we can really get more of the effect. And you can play with the filtering, of course. I give it up for you. Give it up, give it up, give it up. And if I go to the cutoff, maybe again, I'll open them just a little bit more. I get a bit more of the body of them in there. I give it up for you. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. All right. And the final step on this delay return, I'm going to send it to some reverb. Let's hear what that's like. I give it up for you. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Let's hear it in context. So there you go, custom multi-tap delays. And of course you can play with the cutoff to get them how you want and the panning for dramatic effects. It's more realistic level in the blend. So delay designer for customizable multi-tap delays. It's not as scary as it looks. Give it a try. This is Eli Kranzberg for Logic Pro Expert.